And that is probably what is going to happen as the housing market implodes, the purchasing power of the dollar will fall with it and gold and silver will rocket back up to their monetary ratios as all gold substitutes represented by the US dollar collapse. Well, hello there, my friends. Rafi here from the End Game Investor with this week's Silver Report for Arcadia Economics. This week, we're going to cover a guy named Elon Musk. You know that guy who bought Twitter for $44 billion? Well, if he had bought silver for $44 billion, we wouldn't be in this mess right now globally in the financial system. But we have some good news because Elon Musk is now a Twitter follower of Wall Street Silver. And there are some rumors that he's looking to buy a silver mine coming from Robert Kiyosaki. Is this gonna solve all our problems? No, but it might. <laughs> we are in the 10th consecutive month of net drainage from paper silver funds across the world. The longest consecutive net drain of silver from paper silver funds in the last 20 years at least. And this drain is happening even as silver has clearly bottomed since September. And we're gonna go a little bit into the technicals of hyperinflation, the difference between the quantity theory of money and the liquidity theory of money. This silver report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines, symbol FSM, which on December 19th announced an update on its construction activities at Seguela Gold Project located on Ivory Coast. The project continues on time and on budget with the majority of materials and equipment now on site. Focus is now shifted to operational readiness in preparation for the commissioning of the processing plant with first gold pour expected in mid-2023. The project is 85% complete as of November 30th, 2022. Everything within budget, everything on schedule. On to this week's Silver Report. I got this message from the people at Wall Street Silver showing me that, wow, Elon Musk suddenly follows Wall Street Silver and he only follows 155 accounts. This could be significant. Why would Elon Musk follow Wall Street Silver? He must be interested in silver, at least to some degree. And there is some evidence that he is looking to buy his own silver mine. This is unsubstantiated. These are rumors emanating from Robert Kiyosaki, who is said to be close to Elon Musk from the Daily Star UK newspaper. Elon Musk set to buy his own silver mine and bid to solve biggest weakness, Pal says. Many of Elon Musk's mega companies rely on silver to function and the billionaire burns through masses of it on a daily basis and he could be about to buy his own silver mine. Writer Robert Kiyosaki, who you might know from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, who is sort of on our side of the monetary equation, who is a longtime supporter of the billionaire Twitter owner, has claimed that Musk's main issue is the semi-precious metal silver. Due to Musk's main business, Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter, being in the tech sphere, it is thought that the 51-year-old Elon Musk uses a lot of silver in his products. Silver is also a key raw material for Tesla's energy, which uses solar panels, panels where silver is a key component of conducting electricity through capturing the sun's rays. It has been rumored that Musk bought around 400 million pounds worth of silver in January, but he never confirmed it. Well, be these rumors for what they may, be that as it may, be them as they may, we know that Musk is now a Wall Street Silver follower. I wonder why that is. And really, the industrial uses of silver, as important as they are, are not nearly as important as silver in its monetary uses which will come back with a vengeance once all gold substitutes are no longer trusted, including the dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound, and all the rest of it. But anyway, as silver has bottomed at around 1650 back in September, what is the state of the paper silver market? Well, if you look at the bottom bars here, going back to 2002 all the way to now, you have these bottom bars these red bars going down, that means a drain in paper silver funds and all transparent paper silver. That includes SLV, that includes the COMEX and all of the places where you can buy allocated or unallocated silver. How much silver is in these funds? Well, it's been going down for the last 10 months straight. This despite the spot price bottoming three months ago. Never have we been close to 10 months of consecutive drainage. In 2011, when silver hit $50 and then crashed, there was barely any movement relatively compared to now in paper silver funds. Well, the drain continues. It means that paper traders are still out of the market. Keep them out as long as possible. The longer they're out, the better. Let 
the silverbacks take control of this market. Next, something to keep an eye on for the next four days. Platinum deliveries begin in four days. It is an active contract. If you look at the chart here, you can see that the physical stocks of platinum, which means little silver, are down to below pre-COVID levels. We are now down to 130,000 ounces and platinum is 50 ounces per contract. So that means we have about 2,300 contracts available for delivery and how many are open? 23,429 with four days to go until delivery. So we have about 10 times as many contracts that are open or available for delivery. Platinum stocks have been draining fast since around when Silver Squeeze began in the middle of 2021, a little bit later than Silver Squeeze, but the supply has been going down fast. And now one of my subscribers at the Endgame Investor pointed me to an article written in 2011 by my favorite gold and silver monetary analyst, Daniel Oliver. And I don't make a secret about that. He is my favorite and it's for good reason. This paragraph from his research paper 11 years ago explains why hyperinflations do not necessarily go correlated to the amount of money in the banking system. They are triggered by defaults, not in the private sector, but defaults in the assets that are held by the central banks. And what are those? Those are government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. Mortgage-backed securities default when people stop paying their mortgages. They stop paying their mortgages when interest rates go too high and they can no longer afford to. That is already happening. And so we can expect because the value of the dollar is welded to the value of real estate, because the central bank owns so many mortgage-backed securities, that when the housing market does crack, the dollar is going to go down with it. Here is how Oliver explains it. Page 10 from Mermican Report, December 15th, 2011. Hyperinflations always affect highly indebted countries and always strike suddenly. The common explanation is that there is a psychological moment when holders of currencies realize it is worthless and abandon it. But pleading animal spirits is not a satisfactory answer. That's true. We often say, well, there will be a point when suddenly everyone will realize that the currency is worthless and that's when gold and silver explode, especially silver, going back to a 15 to one monetary ratio, which is what all I always say is going to happen, and it is. But he gets down to more of the technicals of it, how this actually happens, what triggers the psychological abandonment of the currency. So he says, a better theory is that a society-wide short squeeze can elevate a currency's value for a period of time as long as debts are near universal and service. What does that mean, a society-wide short squeeze? That just means a lot of debt. What is debt? Debt is shorting currency, selling currency short, and then you have to buy it back when you are, as you're paying the debt down. So it's just another word for debt or another way to see debt as a short squeeze on the currency, because in order to service the debt, you need to buy the currency to service the debt. And that creates the short squeeze on the currency, elevating its value temporarily as long as debts are serviced. However, he says, but once a critical mass of borrowers actually defaults, Demand dissipates and the currency plunges to seek its economic value as determined by the asset side of central bank's balance sheet. When people default on debt, what happens? They no longer need the currency to service the debt because the debt is now worthless. They have defaulted and it's done. That party no longer needs the currency and so the short squeeze dissipates. But listen to this. Private defaults, he says, merely rearrange which parties hold the currency. It doesn't change the monetary situation. It just changes who owns the money or who has the currency. It is default by assets held by the central bank or alternatively the helicopter drop that break the short squeeze. And since central banks hold mainly government bonds, there is no collateral to be had. The asset side of the balance sheet is left barren and the currency worthless. So Oliver is saying here that what triggers the psychological moment when you realize the currency is worthless, that is when the assets on the balance sheet of the Fed itself, those are the ones that default. And since it is very difficult to see the government, the U.S. government defaulting anytime soon, what could actually default and what will default are the massive amounts of mortgage-backed securities that are on that balance sheet. When people stop paying their mortgages because they can no longer afford it, that is when the purchasing power of the dollar really starts to plummet fast. Let's continue. Here he says, historical evidence supports the liquidity theory of money over the quantity theory. In a 1981 paper for the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, Thomas Sargent, who recently won the Nobel Prize in Economics, 
examined the balance sheets of the central banks of Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany, and Czechoslovakia during their hyperinflation and subsequent stabilizations in the 1920s. In all five cases, the central banks bought large quantities of government debt that had no hope of being repaid because large government deficits. In other words, the banks emitted a stream of new notes, of new currency, that had no backing at all because the debts that were backing it couldn't be paid. In all cases, depreciation initially lagged the decay in the assets on the balance sheet, but then devaluation occurred at a much greater rate than the quantity theory of money would suggest. For example, in 1921 to 22, the Austrian note in circulation increased 39 times, but the retail price index surged 110 times. The other cases are similar. And so what he's saying here is that as the money supply increases, as long as debt is not defaulted by assets on the balance sheet, the short squeeze on the money continues, continuing its artificial value relative to the assets that back it. But that doesn't last forever because eventually the assets do default. And that is going to happen when the payers, the ultimate payers of the mortgage-backed securities that pay that money ultimately back to the Fed, when they default, that is when prices on the consumer level really start to pick up fast. And that is that psychological moment where there is no longer any faith in the currency. It just do doesn't just happen out of the blue. There is a trigger for it. That is the trigger. And that is probably what is going to happen as the housing market implodes. The purchasing power of the dollar will fall with it and gold and silver will rocket back up to their monetary ratios as all gold substitutes represented by the US dollar collapse. This is Rafi of the Endgame Investor coming at you with this week's silver report for Arcadia Economics. Is 2023 going to be the year? I think so. So have your stacks ready and have a happy new year to all.